Did you know? Until the great flood came, it had never rained on earth. So when God talked about flooding the, flooding the earth with waters from heaven and waters from down beneath, Noah had no clue what, a rain, what rain looked like. Amen? But he said, the Bible says over here, listen. By faith, Noah being warned of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Noah being warned of God, of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear and prepared the ark. He heard the voice of God and there was no mistaking. He believed. It stirred something in him. Although the entire world mocked and heckled at him, he went ahead working on his project. Nothing could deter him. Nothing could deviate him. Nothing could distract him because the voice of God had birthed faith in him. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Go to Exodus chapter 3, please. Exodus chapter 3. In Exodus chapter 3, God is speaking to Moses and he says this in verse, in verse 10. Come now therefore, God is speaking, he says, come here Moses, I will send you unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, do you remember that a few years ago, that when Moses tried to become the deliverer of the nation of Israel, and he killed an Egyptian, and the word was spreading, he ran for his life. Correct? He ran for his life. He had no strength to defend himself. But today... The voice of the Lord comes to Moses and says, Moses, I'm sending you back to Pharaoh to deliver my people. He tried it once, but it didn't work. But now he is going under the orders of God. He heard the voice of God. What you cannot do in your natural strength, you can do with divine strength. But divine strength comes only when there is faith. And faith comes only through accessing the voice of God. Moses, what did God say? Moses, come now and I will send you to Pharaoh. It is the same Moses who ran away from Pharaoh is now going back to Pharaoh. He ran for his life from Pharaoh, but he's going back to Pharaoh. Can you see what the voice of God can do? Once you hear the voice of God, obstacles become miracles. Barriers become wonders. Everything changes. Until your spiritual deafness is healed, your future remains uncertain. Your spirit, did you hear what I said? Until your spiritual deafness is healed, your future remains uncertain. Anyone who did exploits in the Bible, heard from God look what Jesus said in John chapter 10 go there please John chapter 10 hallelujah John chapter 10 and let's look at verse 4 and when he put forth his own sheep he'd go before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice and a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of the stranger they know see his sheep know his voice do you know the voice of God I said do you know the voice of God it's you know don't answer me answer it to yourselves because this is very personal and I'm teaching you how you can live a very successful life and a very prosperous life when everything around you is collapsing. The voice of God. Faith is what will make you stand.
Paul in the midst of trials. Faith is what will make you cause everything to come, come to a still when there is a storm around you. But faith is not that is something that is generated out of your head. Faith is birthed in the spirit and it's birthed by the word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. They know his voice and listen to this. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from the voice of a stranger. Friend, until you hear the voice of God, you have nothing to hold on to in life. Your anchor in life is the voice of God. Your strength in life is the voice of God. Your foundation in life is the voice of God. Somebody say amen. Men of exploits are men who are sensitive to the move of the spirit. You have to have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say. Look what Jesus said about himself in John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And look at verse 30. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgments are just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Did you catch that? I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear. Somebody say, as I hear. Jesus said, as I hear, I judge. He said, I only say what I hear from the Father and I only do what the Father shows me. See, he was a man who was led by the Spirit of God. We got to be men and women who are led by the Spirit of God. Remember Jesus, until the day he was water baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, not a miracle was done. But the day he got filled with the Holy Ghost, he began to experience the Holy Spirit. And he went into a time of will, into the wilderness. And when he came out, he, he says, he came in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. And from there on, he moved under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And he said, as he was, so are we in this world. So what is God requiring of us? What is God expecting of us? That we too, like our elder brother Jesus, will tra should train ourselves to be able to hear him and follow him. Hear him and do what he says. Don't be led by the flesh. Don't be directed by the world. Don't be led and be, and, and be pressurized by your peers, by your relatives, by your community, by your, by your culture. But have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say and do what He says. And let me tell you, even before you start or embark on the journey, you will be criticized. And you will not be understood. Jesus he said, I don't say a word I haven't heard from God. And he called the Father, Father. He was the first one who introduced to the Jews and to the world that God is a Father. And they said, that is blasphemous. You're making yourself equal with God. See, when you walk in the Spirit, don't expect everybody to understand you. That's a price you pay. But your success is something they will not be able to argue with. The results that you show forth are some things that they cannot argue with. Don't try to please man, please God. Don't try to please your relatives, please God. Don't try to please your culture, please God. You got to be sold out to say, God, I will do what you say in spite of what it may cost me. It may cost me my friendships. It may cost me some relationships. It may cost me my position. It may cost me, cost me to be misunderstood by many. It's all right. That's the price you pay. That's what Jesus said. What does it mean when it says, take up the cross and follow me? It doesn't mean you've got to take a wooden cross and follow after Jesus now. No, it makes no sense. This is the cross. Persecution is the cross. Being misunderstood is a cross. Being heckled is a cross. Being mocked is a cross. Being, being uh, spoken evil of is a cross. 
Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. His brother had problem in his left eye. He couldn't read uh, the Bible uh, clearly. But now after prayer, he feels that he's totally delivered and, clear and healed. He can actually read the scripture right now. Oh, praise. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Glory. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glorify God one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, let him read. Gopa Ishwari Mukante Manchi Peruno. Wendy Bangara Mukante Dayunu Kora the Ganeva. Hallelujah. Amen. Is our do. Is our do. Edmukan Samasa Munde Tanaki. Athana Edmukan Sarekanaba de Kadu. If you put a Kanato Saraka Chadogalutuna, Dura Mundu Chadogalutuna. Hallelujah. So he says, All what I hear, I say. Glory be to God. So how do you hear the voice of God? Go with me to the book of Revelation, please. Revelation chapter 1. Say amen if you're there. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write it in a book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. What is John's testimony? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice and I heard behind me you must be in the spirit to hear the voice of God I said you must be in the spirit to hear the voice of God I was in the spirit and I heard behind me Flesh and blood cannot hear the voice of God. So remember, if you are a carnal Christian that is being led by the dictates of the flesh, you have no access to the things of the Spirit, which means you cannot hear the voice of God. Who is a carnal Christian? A carnal Christian is somebody that is led by the fleshly dictates. A carnal Christian is an emotional Christian. He's controlled by his emotions. A carnal Christian is somebody that will yield to the temptations of the flesh. On Friday I was preaching and I said, let me take you there. We'll come back here. Go to Galatians chapter 5 please. I think you need to hear this. See, many are struggling in their life and walk with God and wondering why things are not working for them although they go to church, they read the Bible, they pray, they tithe, they give, but it's not working. Okay. Look at this. <clears throat> Verse 18. If you be led by the Spirit of the law, Spirit, you are not under the law. The works of the flesh are these, are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variations, uh, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have told you also in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Anybody that is involved in any such things has been denied access into God's spirit realm. They may be born again and they may get to heaven by the skin of their teeth. But while they live here, they're going to be cut off from God's presence. They're going to be cut off from the voice of the Holy Ghost, from the voice of God, from the leading of the Holy Spirit. See, but today we find there are many people that are living in the church that are not ethical, that are living immoral lives, that have illicit relationships, that have relationships outside their marriages. The whole church is on silent on me. 
I know when you're silent I'm hitting at you and somebody is getting it this morning you have murderous intentions you have envy you have jealousy you have hatred towards somebody given the opportunity you'll squeeze their neck like you would squeeze the neck of a chicken you'll stomp over them and kill them if it were possible and you live without morals you live a life where you're playing with on the borders of sin some of you 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 know don't give scope to the enemy to somehow enter through the back door if you know that entertaining certain things and getting into certain places would cause you to compromise you should get out of it the Bible says in the days of Nebuchadnezzar or in the days of Daniel the king and all the princes and the queen and everybody was in that place in the palace where there was partying going on they were all together drinking out of the vessels that came out of the temple of God they were rejoicing they were dancing they were doing all kinds of things and suddenly the hand of God appeared and a writing was appeared on the wall and everybody began to shiver and shake and the king's knees began to buckle because they could read but they did not understand there was fear that gripped everybody and they said who can explain who can understand this and the queen said there is a man there is a man in the kingdom that served your father his name is Daniel where is he he can be found in the party He cannot be found where partying is going on. He is not willing to let his soul and his spirit be contaminated by the things of the world. He is not going to compromise to enjoy and please his flesh at the expense of being cut off from the realm of the spirit and access to God. It is too expensive. What is it that you love? You say you love God, then why are you sleeping, sleeping around with so many different people? You say you love God, then why are you trying to develop a flirting relationship with somebody? Why are you taking, texting those suggestive messages? Why are you texting messages that have double meaning? Did you know that is a peril? That is going to destroy your access to God's kingdom. That's going to destroy the prosperity and the blessing that God wants to shower upon you. Do you know that the Lord said, Cain, remember, sin is watching and waiting at your doorstep. He wants access into your life. Be careful, he said. Unless you open the door, the devil cannot come once you're born again. But many are playing and toying around at the door. Thinking that they will not fall. Let me tell you friends, we're all human. If you're not careful, any one of us will fall into temptation. Including myself, because I too am human. But we will, if we keep ourselves clean and guard ourselves and say, No! This is a life of no compromise. When, remember, when, when, when um, Potiphar's wife came and became very suggestive and seductive, watch what Joseph said. How can I sin against God? Friend, remember, if he had given in to Potiphar's wife, she would have, he would have had a lot of leverage. She could have talk, talked to her husband favorably. He could have got a good position in the government. They could have put him in a nice place, but don't ever forget. What you compromise to get to the top will control you when you get to the top. 
what you compromise to get what you want will always control you when you get to where you want. If he had become a very high official and he was trying to live a good life and there was something that Potiphar's wife wanted but Joseph did not want it because this one that Potiphar's wife desired was right and she wanted it. All she had to do was give a call to Joseph. Hey, Joseph. I know what you're thinking, but I want this to be done. Yes, ma'am. Because she controls his reins. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Don't live a life of compromise. Don't be a man or a woman that's led by the dictates of the flesh. Anybody that is given to the dictates of the flesh has cut himself and herself off from everything that the kingdom of God offers. And you have no access to the voice of God. Friend, sin is nobody's friend. Sin is a destroyer. It's a destroyer of your destiny. So when your wife says, can I borrow your phone? Don't say, no, no, where is your phone? No, you can't, you can't borrow my phone. Why do you need my phone? And she somehow gets a hold of it and she's trying to look through and everything is locked through passwords. What's your password? Women, why do you need my password? Huh? Why do you need my password? I have so many things that are official. What official? I read something where an official was making phone calls to somebody in the midnight between 12 and 2 and he's landed in the soup now. They're doing investigation on his life. On the pretext that he's helping this woman, he made phone calls. And when they traced the phone calls, they made more than a thousand phone calls. And majority of them were made between 12 and 2 in the night. What kind of phone calls would they be? And there were many, many text messages exchanged between them. And there is a major investigation going on. He's a very high official. Come on, church. You can't be playing with God. I'm not criticizing nobody. I'm giving you an example. That's his life. And he can do what he wants to do. But you are a child of God and you can't do what you want to do. You got to do what God wants you to do. You know why? Because he paid the price. He shed his blood and he says, I am your owner. But the goodness of God is, although he owns us, he gives us freedom. Choice is yours. Decision is yours. Come on, church. Come on, church. This is the day you make up your mind and give yourself to God that God may bless you and bring you into the realm where you can hear the voice of God unhindered and unchecked by the devil. Come on, this is the day you will repent of your sin. This is the day you will say, no more secrets between me and my wife and between me and my husband. Everything is exposed and everything is transparent. From today you will make up your mind, I will not flirt with another woman in the, in the office. I will not flirt with another guy in my corporation. My boss gives, tries to suggest something to me. I'll say, watch out. You're playing with fire. You better not come close to me. You're going to burn. Come on. You don't need his favor. You need his favor. He doesn't promote you. He promotes you. The promotion comes from God, not from man. When you stay true to God, the blessing of God will manifest in your life. Come on, church. You got to understand what I'm teaching you this morning. Hearing the voice of God is a source of your faith. And you cannot. Hearing the voice of God is not cheap. There is a price to pay. Crucify the flesh. Crucify the flesh. Take control. Ask. What, what did God say? But pastor, I'm weak. Really? You got a helper. That's what he's called. The Holy Spirit is called our helper. So say, Holy Spirit, I am weak in this area. I need your help. I'm desperate. Please help me. He will come and strengthen that particular area in your life. Every time I pass by a, a bar, every time I pass by a wine shop, everything in me is pulling me that way. <laughs> help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will give you something to strengthen you and make you walk away from it. And the day will come when you will look at that and you will say, mm -mm, I don't like it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, as you pray much in the Holy Ghost and build up your spirit, man, you know what? What your flesh likes will become what you detest most in your life. Because your love for God will cause you to detest everything that God detests.
Amen. My friend, people of God, this is the heart, my heart cry that you would be able to hear his voice. You want real success? You want real joy? You want real promotion? You want real riches? Access is the voice of God.